All right, and uh, welcome back to episode five of the generically named Luke Nielsen podcast. I'm here with, again, one of my favorite people ever and our first return guest yeah. on our fifth episode because <laughs> I just have that big of a network. <laughs> But we're here with my younger brother, Logan. How's it going, man? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. Thanks for being back on the podcast. Yeah, happy to do it. And uh, it was pretty cool. We talked about wanting to do a follow-up um, after our first one. Because the first one, I think we recorded, it was either at the end of July or like beginning of August. Yeah, somewhere there. Yeah, because it was right after... Like, we did some vacation stuff. So I think it was July, maybe, kind of right in there. I think it was tail end of July, and then it, we released it, like, right away in August. Something August, like that, yeah. The fourth, something like that. And, you know, it was kind of the first thing I put out with kind of this media thing that I was yeah. starting a little bit. And the response to your, you know, episode of the podcast was kind of crazy. I mean, just in terms of the number of people commenting and coming up and talking to me yeah. about it. Well, and, and me too. I was getting, you know, messages on Facebook and some random emails from people I didn't really know, but who had said they, you know, and people who I think mostly knew you anyway, but like had heard the show and wanted to... I don't, some of it was like thanking me for talking about it, which which I always feel weird about. I appreciate it, but it's always <laughs> like it's like I I was I was just like here's you know here's what's going on with me, uh, and 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 then people wanted to share their own story, and and it sounded like a lot of people who had never shared it really with anyone or had never really been open with it, and you know, and cause I know you got way more of it than I did. <laughs> like, yeah, it was crazy, and. If you haven't listened to the first episode or don't know what we're talking about, it may make more sense to go back and listen to that one first. Logan talked a little bit about some of his challenges with uh, just mental health stuff. And the response from a lot of people was pretty crazy because I had the same thing. You know, I would get a text from somebody or an email message or somebody would come up to me out in public and just be like, hey, you know, that was really cool of your brother to talk about that and, yeah. and said things, you know, like made me feel like I wasn't so alone. I've dealt with these things for a long time. And it was pretty humbling in the sense that it was, you know, people who I know, some people who I you know, like felt I was pretty close to or whatever, and then didn't know that they had been having some of these experiences. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and I think we talked about that a little bit in the last one about how, you know, because I had been doing some material about it in my stand-up, and I had had people coming up to me and, like, thanking me for talking about it. And it, it had become clear that, you know, like, I, I don't want to make it sound like talking down on, like, our community or anything, but it's like, I know there's things just we're not as open about, like, in kind of more rural, small-town area. There's just stuff we're not as open about and then like you know i live in chicago where and i'm in a comedy community where everyone is so open about it like, like you know because it's you know you're at an open mic and it's you know 20 comics in a row being like man so i sure do hate my life like you know, it's like so everyone's so open about it there it's like so it's so it was kind of you know so i already knew that was the case but it just after just people hearing just a frank conversation about it like how many of them like I think hearing jokes about it's one thing, but then just hearing someone talk about it must have opened up a lot of, I don't know, like, I don't know, just kind of the floodgates of people wanting to maybe actually share their experience, which is very cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, it, it was really cool and just, yeah, I think made it easier for other people. Hey, somebody else is talking about this in a pretty candid way and it's okay to talk about it. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, and that's something I've just made a goal since then I mean, it was already a goal before that but really since then seeing how badly some people just needed to be able to say like yeah not, everything's not all right all the time and you know and and just everything i've gone through and stuff like so i've you know just friends of mine too i've just tried my best to just be there more and more available to have people say those things because yeah that was one of the you know i talked about it in the last one the hardest part about it is saying it for the first time, you know, that's what led to me having multiple breakdowns and felt like I was losing my mind was that I just never once said like, uh Oh, like things, things aren't going okay. This is, things are wrong. And I want to feel better than this. Yeah. Well, and I 
thank you to you not only for sharing that, but it was kind of funny, you know, as we recorded that, you kind of talked about like, well, what's your goal with all this? And <clears throat> I didn't really have a super defined like outline of goals. I'm like, yeah, this just seems like something I want to do and, and kind of uh, everybody and their cousins doing a podcast and things now, but it was like... It's weird if someone doesn't have a podcast yeah, to me, yeah. to be honest, like... <laughs> <laughs> little, little less so around little here. Less so around here, but like, yeah. But, if I meet a new person in Chicago, it's just like you, you don't have a, a podcast. What are you wasting your life? Like, what are you? <laughs> yeah, it's like not having a cell phone. Exactly. You know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, you know, for me, one of the nice opportunities, or kind of what I wanted to do with the podcast, especially, is to get away from some of the small talk things that are kind of our day-to-day life interactions with people yeah to have a little bit deeper conversation and it was nice because not only us having that but it kind of lent itself to that with some other people where other people would come up and and you know and not in a a, a negative way where and i shouldn't say negative but like not in a way that they were complaining or anything but they were just kind of like hey i've had anxiety too and this is kind of you know what i went through and like that's cool. You know, that's a real conversation yeah. to have with somebody and things that you maybe realize a little bit how little you know people, what they're really going yeah. through. Absolutely. So I just think that was a really cool thing from my end where to start off all this media stuff, like, yeah, that was kind of the the goal, even if I couldn't articulate it, was like hopefully make some sort of connection with people in a way where they're like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah, and I mean, and that was, you know, when you had talked to me about doing it, you know, especially at that point where, where I was at, where I was still really going through the the middle of it, kind of, why I was on board about doing it is, one, I was just still in the place where just talking about it helped me more, you know, so there's mm-hmm. the selfish reason of just like, I feel better when I get to talk about it. And, and then, yeah, I don't know, like we said that going into it, it's like, you know, you know, worst, the worst case scenario is no one hears this and whatever I got to just, we got to just talk about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the best case scenario is other people heard it and connected to it. And I don't know, just felt like they weren't alone. It's, you know, not, I didn't, you know, we, you know, I didn't do anything special and like, I didn't, I don't know if I helped anybody or anything, but I, you know, you know, who knows, maybe being able to reach out to us and say, like, I have it too, then that was able to launch them into telling, you know, someone close to them that, yeah. hey, this is, you know. Because yeah, I remember sending you a, a podcast last year when I was going through. It was an interview with a comedian I loved called uh, Gary Goldman. Yeah. And I sent you that of just being like, because I couldn't articulate it myself yet. And I said, this is this is how it feels in my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything he's talking about, like, I get and I'm going through. And, and that helped. And, you know, so I don't know, maybe someone was able to send this to somebody and be like this. This is what I'm trying to tell you that I that the words don't come out. Like, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, you know, and I think it did do that. And I'm a hero, is what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's, that's God, right. no, God, no, that would be, that would be the worst. That would be, the first one, he was so vulnerable and like really open us up. The second one, he's real full of himself that's, now. That's right. That's right. T- turned it all around, and now he's gone the I other way. I liked him better when he was sad. He's just arrogant now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, uh, that's funny. And then I'm also just feeling bad for people listening to this, especially if you're listening to it with headphones. And then both my brother <laughs> and I laughing at the same time because we don't have quiet laughs no, in our family. No, and I've and I'm sure it's still loud because these are powerful mics. I've, I've done I podcast and left. I've learned when I laugh, I need to turn the f away from it <laughs> to, to laugh. But I know it still carries. It still fills a room. <laughs> so I'm like I'm leaning back as I start laughing. But I've been I got confronted at an open mic once. Uh, <laughs> Because I was, I, my friends were on stage and they were just killing me. I laughed real loud, and someone just turned me, an audience member turned to me from their seat, and they said, "That is not your real laugh." <laughs> <laughs> and I just said, "Sorry, it really is. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's this loud. <laughs> it's, yeah. This is what's going on." Yeah, no, I get that, and uh, you know, coupled with my voice, like that's not your real voice. Like, oh no, I sound mm-hmm. this dumb, and I laugh that way. So, just apologies all around. Yeah, the, the best joke, uh, a roast joke, a friend of mine, Pete Casey, said about me at roast. 
roast. He said, Logan Nielsen laughs so loud so people don't forget he exists. And it's, <laughs> it's one of the greatest jokes anyone's ever said about me. <laughs> that, that's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> so now, um, I guess mention with the what's the name of that podcast that Gary Goldman was on it's called the hilarious world of depression yeah um and it's actually it's out of Minneapolis actually oh uh, yeah really? John Moe is a radio guy up there like I knew him from an old show he used to do and they put uh clips up on YouTube that was like a variety show uh that you know like Paul F. Tompkins would be on and stuff and who's one of my favorites so I'd watch that stuff but yeah then he started this show about depression so yeah it's right out of the Twin Cities huh it's a, yeah it's a really great podcast like if anyone like it's it's well produced and it's not it's not so like it's it's comedians talking about really extreme mental illness but like it's it's well produced and it's it's from a point of hope not from a like here's just sadness you know it's more from a yeah well you had sent it to me and then so I listened to the Gary Goldman episode which just as an aside, if you want to watch like funny comedy, Gary Goldman is top shelf. In this economy, is one of my favorite specials that's oh. been made by anybody. It, it's so brilliant. Yeah. He's such a good comedian. Yeah, no, I, he's great. So I had known him, and then you had sent me that, and then I, you know, listened to a few episodes of that podcast, The Hilarious Road of Depression, and it, it was nice, even from an outsider who. You know, I haven't really battled with depression or a, a mental health issue, but because it's comedians too, you know, it's presented in a way where you get really thoughtful insight and then a little humor in there too, so it yeah. doesn't become so heavy that yeah. it's unbearable. Because they play clips of their stand up and stuff too, especially if it's about whatever issue they're talking about. And well, and I, I think why people tend to especially talk about it amongst comedians is we've just really learned in the last few years is how you know creative people in general but especially like with comedians and stuff that depression and anxiety is pretty much in everyone like you know yeah. it's weird if i meet a comedian who hasn't struggled with depression like for some reason it's just so connected with it and then i think too with comedians they just they already are vulnerable about it know how to talk about it you know especially mm. all the ones who are on that show they're all older you know they're you know, pro comedians who've been around for 20 years. So they really know how to just like, yep, here's my soul blind. You know, like <laughs> yeah. I know how to tell it to you, you know, in a not de you know depressing way, you know? So mm -hmm. do you think, I mean, that's part of the, you know, cause there does seem to be this maybe higher percentage of depression and anxiety and those sorts of things amongst comedians. than there is maybe amongst the rest of the general population do you think some of that is it lends itself to people who just are looking at things and being introspective and those sorts of things? I mean, I, this is kind of like maybe can't answer like clinically, but why do you think no. that is? I mean, for, for me, I guess like and not just not just in comedians, but people who are who are artists in general. Um, I, I think it's part of that because yeah, there's all of those things have so much introspective and so much introspection to them and when you're and especially when you're still developing you're still just you know getting a hold of yourself you know who you are creatively who you are and especially in all creative industries are so hard to make it in too i i think then having to explore who you are so so critically and so whatever while just developing as a human i think just lends yourself to being super self-critical you know um at least that's how it always felt for me and then especially i think with a lot of comedians because i know i was guilty of this too for the first couple of years doing it when i was you know because i had dealt with depression before i was ever a comedian too and so you know they weren't necessarily you know hand in hand but uh like oh i forgot my point what i was going for it no but uh, <laughs> Like I was, I, I would convince myself like, well, I don't need therapy. I have stand up. I go up on stage and I talk about this stuff. So therefore I'm fine. And I, I know so many comedians who still think that way. And especially younger, newer comedians who they're just starting to get there. Especially I see it a lot with comedians who they start getting some stuff. They start getting some notice and then they burn out so quickly because then, then they get more critical. The more mention they get, the more notice they get. And then they kind of fall apart. And it's because you convince yourself, like, no, 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 I'm, I'm talking about my depression on stage, so I'm, I'm not hiding it. And it's like, you're also still not dealing with it. Like, I, was, I never had actually processed anything I was dealing with till this last year. 
you know, yeah. and I've been doing stand up for six years now. But like, I would just be depressed. But I would convince myself, like, no, no, I, I get it out. But I, I wasn't really. I was getting yeah. a fake version. It was a placebo, you know, tricking me into thinking that I was, I was being open about my problems when really I had hadn't confronted a single problem that I had within myself at all. Sure, you know. So I don't know if that's part of it. Is you convince yourself that you're that since you're getting it out in your art that you're dealing with it, which just makes you bury it deeper and, you know, and hide it in, you know, more hard to get to places. Maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know, but, yeah. um, yeah, I don't know if that's part of it, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it, and yeah, there is just being, you're trying to look at everything from a different point of view, I guess. I, I don't know if that's part of it too. Yeah. I couldn't answer clinically by any means, but yeah. I don't know. Well, I just think it's interesting when I've talked to you and, and then, you know, it seems to be something we've always watched a lot of stand up like our whole lives mm-hmm. and you know i still watch a lot and then of course you being in it i've never done it but you get a little behind the scenes look or whatever, and it just seems to be so much depression or those it seems to be a real frequent topic amongst comedians it's a frequent and topic and and it, i think it's because too you know you you a little bit lose track of who you are when you know you need to be you know on you know on the stage you like even if you are the most open vulnerable comic you know and even me you know I tend to just talk about myself and stories and stuff like that but it is a different version of you yeah and that's that's the version that people love you know that's and that's you know that's something I've really dealt with you know in therapy in the last year of just like if if I feel like I'm not funny to someone, I feel like they don't love me. Like, I feel like if I can't, and then not even just on stage, just in life, if I'm not getting someone to laugh, if I can't, you know, tickle them in that way, then they don't, they do not love me. And when I don't feel funny, then I, I feel worthless. I, and that's, and that's way more deep rooted than just career. I've always felt that way since I was younger. It was always like, this is, this is my only way to be noticed, to set myself you know, aside from everybody else. Cause I never, I never liked the way I looked. I never thought I was good at anything. I felt like I didn't have any skills except for, I knew how to make people laugh. I knew how to be funny I knew how to be entertaining. So that was what, especially when I wasn't feeling good about doing comedy, I wasn't feeling good about myself and any of that. I, I truly felt I had nothing to offer to the world. I had nothing to offer to anybody. And that was where then I got to the depths of being like, well, then I don't even want to be here anymore because I feel like I serve I serve nothing to anybody, mm. you know. So that's that's how deep and bad it gets when when you associate applause with love, you know. <laughs> like that's kind, you know, and you know, because it's like every woman who's ever fallen in love with me is because I made them laugh. You know, anyone who's all the friends I've made is because I was funny, and you know, especially in the last you know six years, all the friends I've made. And, you know, the women who have, I've dated, it came from doing stand-up. So if I'm not doing that, then I have no life. I have no life. I have no friends. I have, I have no one to know anymore, which completely disregards, you know, the, the man sitting across from me, you know, my family, you know, who, yeah. who knew me way before I was ever funny or anything, you know. But that's just how, how bad it can get. And then put a career on top of that, too, of where it's like, also, I need to make money off this. Yeah. I need this to be financially stable and my sole source of love. <laughs> that is a lot to put on jokes. That's a lot to put on jokes. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, and I, I think you're absolutely right, and that makes a lot of sense to me from a comedian's perspective. And I think people do that in general. Like We kind of put ourselves into these boxes, yes. or other people do, because... Because maybe it is, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe it is the first time that like, hey, this was the thing that made me a little bit popular. This is the thing that got girls yeah. interested in me or whatever. So this is the horse that I'm riding. And if that goes away or something conflicts with that, then it's a it's a big problem because that's that's my yeah. deal. That's my my gimmick. Yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. And it's yeah, any any job. I mean, that's why there are some people who you know they if they lose a job, they feel like they've lost everything that they they don't matter to the world anymore when a lot of times you can just get another job you, know, you can be <laughs> yeah. okay but it's that you know that's i think that's kind of we're all trained that way we're trained to like you're supposed to have your purpose whatever yeah. it is when really i think that's such a 
that's a bad way of thinking, you know, I, I think in life. Some people, it gets them through and makes them feel like they have more drive or whatever, but your only real purpose is to, like, be here. I, I don't think there's an inherent purpose to humanity except for, I don't know, be here. Like, there's really, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. if, you know, I, I truly don't think I was put on this earth to be a comedian. Like, no, just, like, that's what I gravitate towards, what I always wanted to be since I was a kid, you know? Mm -hmm. So to look at it, I think, from a otherworldly point of view is then where you get in those, you know, where then it's like, if this is gone, then, oh, no, I don't matter anymore. Yeah. You know? Well, and I think, I think a sense of purpose is good but connecting yes. that connecting that to a job or to an activity can be a dangerous to, to thing. the to the sole purpose of your existence yeah is is where it gets dangerous yeah you should do everything with a sense of purpose purpose you should want to be good at everything you know that you try and mm -hmm. you know give give your best but but to then be like if i if i don't succeed at this one thing the exact way i want to i shouldn't be alive anymore yeah you know is dangerous and you know that's coming from a guy who has spent time thinking that way you yeah. know and so and so you have kind of mentioned a couple times um uh, talking to your therapist and stuff over the last year and i guess when we recorded last time at the end of july or whatever mm -hmm. it was i mean we were probably I don't know, it was a month or six weeks kind of removed from maybe what, like, your low point was. Was one of my worst breakdowns, yeah. Yeah. And since then, you know, not to say that everything's giggles and rainbows and things like no. that, but I think th things are going better. Yeah, they feel like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, how how are things going, or what have you found to be, like, sort of helpful? I guess just kind of where are you at now from the last podcast? Well, well, since so one of the things that I didn't mention in the last podcast, because I mentioned how I'd had that breakdown, and then I went, you know, to the Grand Canyon. I just then decided to do some traveling just to, like, get out of Chicago, get out of my head, whatever. One of the things I didn't mention, though, was at that time, why I ended up leaving and doing that stuff was uh, I lost my health insurance and I couldn't cover my therapy anymore. So I was suddenly now without the one tool that I felt like was really helping me because hmm. I wasn't enjoying doing stand up anymore. And I was fully I was kind of like decided I was going to quit, you know, and I'd really just I didn't know if I was going to move back home or whatever. I came back home for three days and decided, oh, that I can't do that. Uh, <laughs> I love mom and dad, but it was just like, yeah, no, moving back into their basement ain't going to fix it. Um, so, so then after you know doing that stuff at the Grand Canyon, which was you know a great experience and just got and did just get me out of my comfort zone and just doing something else. Um, I got back to Chicago and I was immediately miserable. I had a couple of days where I was just ready to like break down again. It was just like, great. It's just right back to where it was. I had $44 in my bank account because I'd spent so much money on the trip, you know, didn't work for like a month. Um, and then I, I don't know, just I like I wish it like it was more useful to say, but I just at that moment, I was just like, OK, I can either start feeling better about life or I never will it, it like it was just like a I was the first time I made like an active decision in my head where I was just I just thought about it and I was just like so this will just start back over if I let it and no. then I'm gonna just be worse off than I was because now I don't have my insurance I have less money than I did so I'm gonna have to like really work to get back you know in the black like I'm gonna have to you know I'm gonna just you know just make myself feel even worse and just spiral down even further or i can just not <laughs> like, i know as silly as that is but like because you know i hate when people just say like just don't be depressed and like and it was not that easy but it was just like i finally was just like you know what i got to go do this trip which was amazing and i got to come back you know i got to spend time with my family who i love and i you know came back and immediately had friends who wanted to hear about the trip and stuff and i just decided to I made just the conscious decision. I'm like, I'm going to just enjoy that stuff more. And I actually decided I'm, I'm not going to worry about stand up. I'm not going to worry about career right now. I have a, and my job was willing to take me back. They said that from when I left on the trip, they're like, well, yeah, we'll come, we'll have you back if you want to come back. So I'm just like, you know what? I got people who want the best for me and are supporting me. I'm going to let that be enough right now. Cause that's just what I feel like I need in my life. Um, and I don't know. I just started kind of, 
I, I made my goal instead of like, I want to become this level of success at comedy or whatever. I just, I decided I wanted to be a better son and brother and friend is the decision I made. And then out of that, then out of the blue, I, I did, I got totally handed just a bunch of stand up gigs <laughs> that kind of fell into my lap. And just having that point of view and just, I don't know, I just, I just enjoyed the luck of that and then started enjoying performing for the first time in two years. Yeah. You know, and so I've now, I just, you know, I'm finishing up my busiest fall you know i've ever had you know and stand up and it's just felt fun rather than oh I, by this time next year i need to have this goal accomplished it's like no i'm just happy to be enjoying stand up again so don't know if that really answered your question but that's <laughs> but that's that's where i'm at right now is i'm just i don't know just happy to be around and doing what i like doing with people i like i don't know I think that's a perfect answer, and you know, I'm curious if it's evident to people listening to this because it's evident to me, even just as I'm, you know, talking to you, especially face to face, you know, back for the holidays and stuff. Here, it seems that you are doing a lot better job of, or, or finding ways to sort of mitigate the anxiety a little bit. Like, not that it's gone away, but when you're getting to a state where hey, I'm getting anxious about this, I'm getting worked up. Where in the past, which I think this is the case with a lot of people, mental health issue or not, is then you start to do, your behaviors start to make it worse. Like yes. you, you make decisions that actually pile on to it. Absolutely. And it seems to me, just from an outside perspective, that now you're kind of taking a little bit of time at least to be like, whoa, okay, I'm getting kind of worked up about this, I'm getting kind of anxious. Yeah. Let me stop, pause, not pile anything more on it, and then I can kind of get through it. Yeah, a big thing I started doing was giving myself permission to, like, just have a night where I don't have to worry about anything. And I used to always have those nights, too, where I'd end up, I'd end up not doing anything, getting anything done I wanted, and then I would just be beating myself up for not doing it. I just wasted another night sitting here when I could have been out doing whatever, Um but I started when I start feeling myself get anxious when I'm busy and stuff. I, I start I'm like, you know what? Okay, I look at my week. Wednesday night, I have nothing Wednesday night. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to watch a movie. I'm going to play video games. I'm going to not worry about solving my life that night. Because that's what it, when it used to be, the anxiety would start hitting me. And I'd be like, well, great. I'm feeling this way. I need to, I need to fix something. I need to fix my life. It would always just come down to I just wanted to solve my whole life's problem, which is not possible to do and if you think of your life as a problem it will never be solved <laughs> you know if, if all you think of is like i have this and then like none of it's where i want it to be well you can't fix it in an afternoon <laughs> yeah you know at all you can't fix your career your love life all your friendships everything you ever <laughs> want to do you can't fix that in an afternoon <laughs> you know and so i just i started just giving myself permission to just have like a night where i'm just like i'm not gonna worry about anything i'm gonna i give myself permission to be lazy to just like have a night to just chill out, you know, and just, you know, rest my mind and, you know, go to bed early if I want to, just, you know, lay on the couch with my dog, like, and that just started helping just, even though I was already having, you know, nights where I wasn't, you know, I'd have, you know, full days where I wouldn't shower and get in good clothes and I would just sit on the couch and do nothing. So it's weird that my solution was to <laughs> kind of still do that. But it was different when it was an active decision of just like, nope, I'm going to have a little, you know, a little vacation day. Like I just, I started treating them like it's a mental health day of just like, and that, and that's something like people I think need to do more is like, don't go, go, go. Especially the more anxious, the anxiety in the same way when I would get anxious, it meant I had to do more to alleviate the anxiety when really thinking that way made it worse. And then I would just crack and then I couldn't move, you know, but instead of being like, I'm feeling anxious, I've already done a bunch this week. You know what? I've earned a night to sit down. <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, I think that active decision part is so important. Cause like you said, I think, I think everybody does that and I'm guilty of doing it where you feel like I should do so many things. I have all this yeah. stuff that I should do and because there's so much of it, I basically won't do any of it. And then yeah. I'm just upset at myself because I sat and watched YouTube videos for an hour instead of doing something. But 
if you can kind of block it out and say, okay, I'm going to work on this at this point, and then I am going to build in time to just not have that on my mind, yeah. not, you know, then it becomes like, then it becomes a, a box you can check off. Like it's on your to-do list to chill out and then yeah. you've accomplished something. Yeah, abs- yeah, and then I kind of give myself credit for like, hey man, I relaxed my ass off last <laughs> night. You know, like, <laughs> Well done, you know, sir. It's like, yeah, it's, I kind of like started taking kind of an, uh, like an office hours approach to my anxiety. <laughs> like I really have. Like I've started like, because now at night, like I, I go to bed, I sleep much better than I ever used to because I have just started getting more in the mindset of just like, it is 10 o'clock at night. I'm not going to get anything done. I'm home. I don't want to go anywhere else. Cool. All I'm going to do then for the rest of the night is just whatever makes me feel good right yeah. now. And that and that came from too doing that that the trip to the Grand Canyon because it was something it was just a risk I took of just like I'm just going to drive somewhere. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to go see a thing I've never seen before. And it was amazing and it was beautiful and it was one of my favorite experiences of this year and it was just like so I I started just leaning into just like I want to do stuff I want to do. And that was a big part of it. it. Was it was you know when I had that decision of like I of just like I can keep just feeling worse all the time, or I can lean just more into life and just have some more life. So I started you know because I was already broke at that point. So I started kind of like well spending some money on a you know a concert ticket to go do with a friend. Like not doing that. Yes, I will have that money, but that money's already going to go to bills anyway. Or I can go have an experience with a friend. It's like I'm not advocating like, hey, go broke, you know, <laughs> instead of the problems. But like I was already there. I had no money, you know, and so I just started being like, you know, but I'd I'd rather go broke having some life than going broke scrambling trying to fix whatever I think my problems are. And I also want to be very clear too, as much as I'm saying like I made these decisions that fixes it, I also got back into therapy as quickly as I could. Yeah. Uh, once I could afford it again, started going back to therapy and I'm still going, you know, I just had an appointment last week. I got one, you know, when I get back to Chicago. So it's like, you know, don't, I'm not saying make that decision and you're fine. Throw away the other. <laughs> no, do <laughs> absolutely use mental health resources because that, because still this, you know, fall as much as I'm feeling better, therapy has been invaluable, you know, so yeah. And that's something we had talked about a little bit is just the importance of a therapist or whatever tools are available to you. And I think that's something too that. Luckily, that's gotten more widely accepted and more open. It's still stigmatized. But, but yeah, there is still a little bit of a stigma of like, oh, I go to a therapist. You know, I, I had a student, you know, tell me um, about going to a therapist. And I, my first reaction is like, that's good. That's an awesome yeah. thing. You know, even even if you're not going through anything super life altering or some, you know, big mental health thing, it's a good thing. You know, why would... I think I heard it on a TED Talk or something talking about we take care of our bodies, we exercise, we do all these things and focus on our bodies, mm. but we don't take a lot of time to focus on our mental, yeah. you know, you would go, if you went to a trainer at a gym, nobody would think twice about it. You'd be like, oh, good, you got a trainer, you get yourself in shape. But there's still this slight stigma of going to yeah. a therapist, like, well, your brain's the most important thing. Yeah, well, I mean... I mean, if you just look at the history of how, you know, mental disorders or mental health issues have been treated historically are appalling. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, ice pick lobotomies and stuff, you know, it's it's come out in recent years. A lot of those studies, like those are people that could have just been helped by medication, like, you know, but there was just like, hey, when you when you ram an ice pick in someone's eye, it calms them down. Well, yeah, because you destroyed part of their brain, like you know. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I think there's just always, been, and that, not saying that that's you know still necessarily going on, but that I think you know the history of stuff of we never understood it, and and especially we don't understand, we still don't understand why people can just be inherently sad and and just down all the time and for the longest time it was just looked at like well that's just a sad person you know whatever but it's like no it's it's a true problem in in your head and it can be caused by a billion different things too there's not you know if i kick you you know in your arm and break your arm it's like oh his arm broke there's a way to fix it 
and it was caused by this. And it's like, yeah, if someone breaks their arm, it's usually from some sort of... There's an explanation. <laughs> yeah, it's it's visible. It's clear. There's, there's much more of with, with bodily injuries, there's much more of a cause and effect of why this happened. And with the brain, there's not as much of that because, you know, especially the people who maybe have an experience and then they bury it in their minds because the mind does that to protect itself. So you may not even know why someone is depressed or anxious or whatever. It could be an experience they had that they can't tell you about because they don't remember it. Like... It's it's so mysterious and weird, and, and I was totally a person who stigmatized it for a long time. Uh, you know, I thought if you go if you go to a therapist, it's because you failed. It's because you're a failure. So you you know you needed that because you couldn't get your life together. And then you know, being at my darkest moments and in relationships that maybe weren't the best, having my partner tell me you need therapy just made me sprint the other way and just be like, no, I do not. How dare you tell me that when you know. Did they tell me it the right way? Probably not. But like, it was maybe someone just being concerned, being like, "I can't help you because I'm not a mental health professional." <laughs> you know, like yeah. it probably was the sentiment they were going for. <laughs> you know, yeah. but all I heard was, "You're broken." Mm. And instead of then wanting to fix that, it was just I wanted to ignore how broken I felt because that it's easier. It's easier to not do anything. <laughs> it's yeah. so much easier to just not do anything you know yeah and just if maybe if you ignore it enough it'll just be fine and then you tell yourself like well once i get this thing i, I get this promotion or uh, once i do this show or you know once i get to go to this place then everything will be fine and it's, that's never how it works it never works that way there's not there's not there's not one thing that will ever solve your life you know yeah. if, especially if you're inherently unhappy <laughs> That's that's within you and only within you, you know. Yeah, and I think, like, I feel like I'm rambling more now than when I was actually anxious before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think you're good, but I think that's an interesting point too. Is not only from a like personal perspective on yourself, but when interacting with other people, if somebody's arm is in a cast, you're not gonna like ask them to play baseball or something. You know what I mean? Like it's right. a, it's apparent that there's a problem there where And you're definitely not gonna be like, hey, just don't have a broken arm. Well yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, that certainly, but also just, you know, when you talk to people and we kind of mention like you just don't ever really know what somebody's going through. No. So even if it's not a mental health, you know, disorder or something like that, like you could be talking to someone on their worst day of their entire life, and you might not know because yeah. people don't show those sorts of things. And I think you know that was something that I always, always tried to consider as an educator and those sorts of things. You know, yeah. like the kids in my classroom, I don't know what they're going through, and you know, so I got to kind of give them my best, that sort of thing. But I think it became even more real after our first podcast, and people would come up and you know and tell me these things. And it's like, wow, like I had no idea that you went through that. Or, you know, they would maybe share a story with me about like what led to their anxiety or something like, holy cow, like that's a very traumatic thing. Yeah. And would you maybe treat people differently day to day if you knew those things about them, you know? Yeah, I mean, even friends of mine who have their own issues with depression and stuff, when I finally was like, here is what's going on with me. Some of them were like, wow, like I had no idea you always seemed more together than that. And it's like, well, yeah, that's that's what I put up for everybody. I don't want anyone to see my, you know, what I perceive as my weakness. I don't want people mm -hmm. to see it. Um, so even even people who try to be receptive, receptive of it can totally miss it. You know, myself included, you know. Um, so, yeah, you, you, you never know. And I, I think that comes from, too, you know, when people are just like, ah, they're having a bad day. And I think it was always, it's always been said that way in more of a, like, that means just, like, leave him alone, ignore him a little bit. Yeah. Oh, Gary's having a bad day. He's in a mood. <laughs> just ignore him today. When really, maybe that's the day he needs someone to talk to him so badly. Yeah. Maybe that is the day that he really needs to not be left alone because he's having such a bad day. And I think that's just, that's the view we've always had of it is to, like, ah, they're in a mood, let him be. And some people do need to be left alone when they're in a bad mood. I have my days where I'm just like, please just don't talk to me. <laughs> like, don't talk to me right now. I need to go calm down. But there are the days where I am, I am closed off and stuff. And it's actually, 
inside, I'm just like, please, someone come get me. Someone mm. come talk to me. So just please, I need it. You know, so it's that's I we're, I think that's part of it is just all those things, those little things that we don't realize we do that train our brains into kind of ignoring people who are going through stuff. You know, yeah, that's um, we've talked about in class a few times this year, and it started as kind of a half joking thing. Um, one of the students that I have, who you know, a student I'm close with, and. Uh, she has a tendency of saying like, I'm fine, you know, like Mm -hmm. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. And you know, in kind of a way where we joke about it a little bit, you know, like she's trying to convince herself, but it's one of those things that we've talked about. If somebody's saying they're fine, they're probably not fine. fine. Like nobody ever leads with I'm fine when things are, you know, going great. Like, you know, Hey, how you doing? I'm fine. You know, it's like, I was like, I'm, I'm fine. That's usually an indicator that like, meh, Things yeah. probably aren't fine. Yeah, because I mean, I I just know when when I've said you know I'm fine, or you know, most people say it, it's usually trying to communicate like I'm not great, but I also don't want further investigation. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you yeah. know, but even most people say I'm fine. It's wanting to give the bare minimum, mm-hmm. you know, but also not wanting to put the effort in of truly putting on a you know a fake persona of I'm great, everything's good, hi, like you know. <laughs> Because then that opens you up to, I mean, I guess where I come from, it opens me up to then other people's lives. Yeah. Like where I'm like, I'm great. And then it's like, cool. Well, then what are you up to? I'm like, oh, I don't actually want to talk to you at all. Like, you know, and, <laughs> it's, it, and it's not like it's you, the person, but it's like, it's because I, when I'm in this place, I don't want to talk to people, you know. It's, it's a buffer answer. <laughs> yeah. So I'm fine is enough to check the mark of, I had a conversation with you and then I can, I can walk away. It's you know? the most minimal level. Yeah. 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 That's true. You know, I think I think a lot of the things that you're saying, and I, I think it's important for people to understand, too, that, yeah, a lot of these things apply to if you're going through something like anxiety, depression, or whatever, but I think it applies to just general mental health for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want it to seem like these are only things that, like, well, only if you have, you know, clinical anxiety is this. I mean, like... I think everybody really needs to spend some time on their mental health all the time. And that's like with my students in class, I think high school students are more stressed than they've ever been. At least, you know, in the time that I've been teaching, there's just a lot of stress yeah. and a lot of things all the time. Yeah. Well, and I, it's, you know, we live in a different time now where you're accessible at all times from anywhere. You know, that's, I, like I hate to be one of those people just like ah, social media, blah, but it's like we can't ignore. Big truck just drove by outside. <laughs> I was gonna say, do you want me to hold for that? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we, we got that on mic. Somebody, somebody's uh, proud of this yep, truck, yep, yep. and it is officially documented now. Yep. So good for you. <laughs> yeah, someone's awesome. Yeah, we'll keep it. Uh, going. Remind everyone we are in rural Iowa. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's all good. Um, but no, so I hate to be one of those people that like you know ah, social media and you know it's changing everything. But it is changing everything, and we can't ignore the effect it's having on humanity you know and that's you know because right now everyone talks about the stuff happening in the world they're like the world's worse than it's ever been it's not really you can just see it all the time now you can see every corner of the world from anywhere you can you can have anybody share their opinion about you at any time from any people you've never met in your life and it does mess you up like it it's you know and especially like i'm like kids in high school now like have their own email that they get homework sent to you know like i don't know if you guys do that at your school but like i know that's a thing like now in high school you're immediately doing online stuff so like you're you're never not in school you're never not away from you like uh, from the stuff that stresses you out like you know and it's i hate to like sound like like i'm such an old timer but it's like but it's like we didn't have that like you got your you got your you know your worksheets from the school and then, <laughs> yes, you know, yeah, you just had to make sure, sheets. You know, or whatever, but you, just, yeah. you had to make sure you hand it in the next time you're there. You weren't accessible at any time, you know, to be told something, you know, or, or whatever like that. So I, I think it's, I think there is this like, now like younger kids, they just have to be on and aware at all times, you know, of, of, of everything they're doing, of everything that stresses them out. You know, it's, I don't know. 
It, I think you're absolutely right. Even and social stuff. That's the other thing, too. Even just social <laughs> socializing stuff. There are times you need to kind of not be with everybody you go to school with. <laughs> like, yeah. As much as I love being around people, and you know, I have great friends I love being around, I don't want to be around everybody I know at all times of every day. That drives you insane. <laughs> and that's kind of what social media is. Just like, I'm here with every single person I've ever met. Some I've never met. <laughs> I'm here with them at any time. Yeah. Like, that's a lot to for a brain to comprehend. Like, think of where humans were 30 years ago, you know, well, when you could only call somebody if they were within the 10 feet of the box that was nailed to the wall. <laughs> that was the only time you could talk. Like, that yeah. wasn't that long ago. <laughs> oh, and yeah. Well, and it it is, it's all those things, I think. And it's interesting seeing, just because I work with young people all the time, whenever people, you know, badmouth this generation or whatever i said you know they don't get to see him every day i mean there's a lot of things about this generation i think are very wonderful in the sense that i think through some of that connectivity i think they tend to be pretty compassionate and and, and, and yeah. don't care about some of the th silly things that divided people in generations past because there is that connectivity and because they have other things going on yeah. you know but there, that constant connection, I do do think, gets overwhelming. And there are a lot of kids who never really get separation from school or, or even from, you know, like their parents. Which it's a wonderful thing when students have caring parents. There's far too many who don't have any yeah. of that at home. But maybe don't get that separation too. Of you know, when we went out when we were in high school, you couldn't get a hold of us. You know, it's like yeah. just. Be home by 1230. Your yeah. mom's going to be mad. But that was really it. You know, now they're yeah. tracking them on their phone and you yeah. can text them constantly and, and all those things. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. I don't think any of this is like that, you know, I don't want to make it seem like it's the next generation's fault or oh, the kids are on the social media too much. Like, <laughs> no, it's just more me saying like, I, I don't think we appreciate the effect it actually, that stark change in communication and connectivity has on humanity. Because even for me, I'm not like a huge social network person like even at my most you know being on facebook and stuff was still way down from what a lot of people were but one of the big things i did for myself was i just i turned a lot of stuff on my phone i deleted all my social media i deleted twitter i don't have a twitter anymore yeah. which gets me razzed by so many comedians and they're just like you don't have a twitter and i'm like yeah no and they're like that's how you get work and i'm like not for me i don't use it like you know? <laughs> you know and and you know and i also you know i turned off you know my email notifications i turned off the, you know the news notifications and stuff and it's like not that i'm saying like unplug yourself from the world but like make sure you give yourself time to breathe that you give yourself time to just be where you are you know because I, I i think if you never do that you'll never give yourself a grounded moment and it's so easy to then lose yourself and i and i do think of like kids who are so social media savvy or you know think like think of a kid that's really type a personality and loves getting stuff done and now they can have access to a teacher via email all the time and and they also it's like it's not their fault we gave them these tools, but like we gave them tools to kind of drive themselves crazy, <laughs> you yeah. know, like, I don't know, maybe this has reached a whole different topic of conversation than what it started <laughs> with, but, but I, I do, I do think like we don't appreciate how it, how that stuff does affect us and how we feel and how we can feel at any time. Well, I think just because we're talking about mental health in general, that is an important thing to consider in our society now. And I think I've seen students starting to push back against that a little bit you know where some students are saying like you know i on purpose leave my cell phone you know yes. somewhere when i'm at home or you know like i don't want to be connected to this all the time or i deleted these social media things and i think you see that in society too with some people who've gone to not that you need to do this or whatever but you know some people going to like the tiny houses or the more like um having more experiences than owning things and like things mm -hmm. like that. I mean, so I, th I think there is a little bit, that's just kind of why everything goes in society is you have something new and it kind of reaches a point and it yeah. goes in waves, you know, but I do think that's a real mental health thing to think about. Well, and it, like, you know, just, I know from my own point of view, like it makes it so easy to then compare yourself to everybody. Yeah. Like, oh, well, this person's doing this. Why am I not doing that? Oh, this person gets to go to this place. Why, you know, why can't? I? And, and these people I maybe would never actually get to talk to because I'd never see them. But here I am jealous of their life, you know. Because when a friend of mine gets to go on a cool trip, I want to hear about it. Yeah. I want to hear the experience my friend had. 
you know, when I see him in person, I'm like, tell me all about, you know, <laughs> going to Europe or whatever. Yeah. But when it's someone I don't really know that well, and then I say, oh, here's all their pictures. That I'm just like, ah, oh, screw them. You know, <laughs> you know, they get to do all the stuff. And it's like, why do I care? And it's like, and I think it's, that's the stuff that it makes it so easy to do and, and fall down those those holes. I am not a social media expert by any means. So it's like I've been <laughs> probably talking about it 10 minutes longer than I should have. But, well, no, uh, I, neither am I. Like, I have the social media enough to post these sorts yeah. of things on <laughs> if people want to access them. And that's about yeah. it. Like, I try to, if somebody comments, maybe once a week, like, yeah. say thanks or whatever. But that's about as far as I yeah. And the same thing. Like, I don't check it. I don't get the updates. Because I want it. I think the important thing is, I want to be in control of it. I don't want it controlling me. So, mm -hmm. like, I use Twitter or Facebook. I don't really scroll through Facebook or anything, but really Twitter either. But it's like, I want it to be a thing. If I want to check something on there, I can. But I sort of use it as, like, the newspaper, you know? Oh, like, yeah. like, okay, I'll open it up and uh, check something if I need to. Right. But otherwise... Yeah, and that's I had to kind of make myself be that way. Because I am, I am bad when it comes to comparing yourself to other people i I do i'm very bad about that um and so that was something i had to like figure out about myself that i had to and you know and again i'm not even you know super you know uh, out there on social media and stuff so it's like now nah, i couldn't imagine if i was someone trying to like make a career out of instagram like i look at that and i just think that seems so stressful like people who are trying to make their <laughs> living yeah. out of it because i do I, I you know and people and people who i love too i'll see them you know comics friends of mine who I, I adore and think are hilarious but i'll see them doing something just like now why do they get that and not me and it's like that like and i hate i hate thinking that way i hate feeling that way you know and so that was you know one of the big things i started doing was just you know and i made like rules for myself like i don't check if i do check it i not so that can't be the first thing i do in the morning yeah i gotta get up out of bed do breakfast you know i i, I, I initially when i started like like after the last episode and stuff, I made it like I couldn't check till noon. Like I made myself no check in any of my apps till noon, even my email. Just like I'm gonna check it afternoon because I'm in my day. I'm out there, my brain's working. Because if you do it first thing in bed, then oh, here's the thing that stresses me out. Well, that makes it harder to get out of bed. Yeah, you know that was that was a big thing for me. But well, I, I've found too, it's a important to be protective of your own time yeah it really is and that's something that you know for a while i maybe felt a little guilty about like if somebody even if somebody sent me a text or something i felt like i needed to immediately respond yeah. or something where then i kind of convinced myself that time is like the one thing or one of the few things that it's okay to sort of covet to sort of be yeah. like my time is my time so i mean if I have my kids, especially, I typically don't, you know, I wouldn't even answer a text or something. I usually put my phone in a drawer, like, that's our time together. And if I'm doing something, you know, then people just sort of have to understand that. It's not a disrespect to anybody else, but like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to have a text conversation with you or something right now because I am going to go do this. And sometimes it's as simple as like, oh, I like to, before bed, like do some yoga and whatever and kind of wind down for the night. So yeah. I'm done talking to everybody right now. Yeah, I started doing that. Like I, like I know recently I, I feel like I've been harder to get a hold of by people, but it's, it was something I had to do. Because I would, I would sit there and like stare. I'm like, well, I got to respond to this. It's got to be the perfect response to this. And then I would realize I've been stressing about responding to this text for a half an hour <laughs> instead yeah. of doing literally anything else with my time. <laughs> Because then when I when I finally do send the response, you know, then the response I get back from the person, they're like, okay, great. Like, you know, they they, they weren't stressed, but they weren't thinking, like, I hope he's really putting the work in <laughs> for this response, you know. It's a, it's a big deal. You know, so it's, yeah, you, you do have to be a little protective of of your time. And I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the easiest thing to lose. The easiest thing to lose track of, especially when you're dealing with, you know, anxiety or, or whatever else. You know, it's it's so easy, like... I don't know. There are days like when I would having like my worst days where I would suddenly be like, it's seven o'clock at night already. And like, I feel like I haven't moved. I haven't done anything today, but I found things to stress about and freak out about. So I just lost time. Like, I feel like I've lost so much time like dealing with this stuff. And, and for people who are dealing with, you know, if, if you are like me and you're stressing about sending the perfect response back or whatever, what I started doing that really helped. It, fe it feels like it feels crappy at first. 
But one of the things I started doing is just actually texting back to the person, like if it's something they're asking me to figure out. I started responding like, I will figure that out. I'm freaking out right now. I'm having kind of a freak out. So let me get to this later. And that like just took it off my chest. I like it felt like kind of a cop out to say it really does help to just tell somebody just like, I will get to that. I'm really stressed right now, so I can't think about it clearly. Yeah. And it's like I, I think it's, you know, just one of the easiest things to lose track of when you're in that headspace is just like sometimes just being honest <laughs> is the easiest thing to do. Like that's one of those things that seems so very obvious, but we yeah. don't do because we don't want to upset other people, you know. And it, so I think off, most of the time it comes from a good place. Yes, but yeah, usually the best thing is just be honest. If you're like, oh hey, I'm stressed, or hey, I'm doing this, like. I'll get to it or I'll talk to you later. Or even if it is just protecting your time and being like, yeah. hey, I, I don't really want to have a 30 text, you know, big conversation. Like, I'll talk to you in person when I yeah. see you tomorrow or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah, or just like if I, have a, if I have a little bit more time to think about this, if I can text you about it in the morning, it's going to be a better response. I'm going to have thought about it more than trying yeah. to figure it out right now. And, and, and that is something that's so easy to lose track of because especially like, for me and, and I, I've, other people I've talked to who deal with bad depression, anxiety, like a lot of it comes down to you don't want to feel like a letdown. Like that was for me it was always I felt like I was letting people down all the time, you know, especially like I was starting to deal with like dealing with a hardcore right after a breakup. And I felt like I, I let, you know, my partner down so badly. And that's why the breakup happened. That's why I went this way. It's like I, I just didn't want to let anybody else down all the time. So it felt like saying to somebody like. I don't know, I'm freaking out right now, Was is a way of just admitting, like, oh, I am a letdown. I'm now admitting I'm a letdown. And so it makes it hard to just be honest when really it's one of the most freeing things. <laughs> like, And it, sadly, you know, I, I and I hope, you know, other people can do it before they break down. You know, I, I, I had to have a meltdown at work before I could finally, you know, I had to leave work early in tears to, before I could actually call and be like, I'm not okay and I need help now. I need to go do something now. Cause I'm really not okay. And like saying that did like free it up and started looking for resources and, and start handling that stuff. It's, it's, it's like, I hate just saying like the, you know, the, you know, the truth will set you free, you know, or whatever. But like, <laughs> you know, I hate that being part of the answer, but it's just like, it, it does so much. If you are struggling with it, it does so much to just say like, yeah, this isn't working. What I'm doing right now isn't working for me. As much as it makes me feel like a failure, like, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things to like help me get over some of the stuff that happened that, that my, th my therapist brought up and it, it hurt at first to think about, but he was just like, you know, especially like, cause I was dealing with the, you know, the breakup I went through, I held onto that for so long and just beat myself up for whatever. And he, he finally told me, he's like, he's like, yeah, he's like, I know it hurts. He's like, but you kind of have to just chalk it up as a loss. Because in my head, I was still wanting to fix it. I still wanted to win in the end. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even that I even wanted to like, be with the person again or to whatever. It was just like I didn't want to have the loss. I didn't want to chalk up the, you know, the, the <laughs> loss. I didn't want to take the L. I didn't want to take the L. But like, <clears throat> and he said that. And then like, I just I started thinking about it that way. That did, it did so much for me to be like, yeah, you know what? I lost at that. I lost at something. And... I'm, you know, I'm not saying this will work for everybody, but for me, and I think just my personality where I just, I do not want to lose, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it actually, it freed me up of being like, okay, well then, you know, you can't spend your time folks in a loss. You can think about what to do to prevent the next loss, you know, and, you know, in sports, you know, you know, if you're, if you're playing a, you know, if you lose a football game, just sitting there being like, well, no, but if we did this, we wouldn't have lost that game and then stressing about <laughs> forever. Well, guess what? You're going to you're going to lose the next game or you're not even going to show up for the next game. It's going to be so, you know, you're not even going to try in the next game. But if yeah. you, but you do have to just be like, well, we lost that one. Mm. OK, let's try to not lose the next one, you know, but there's nothing you can do about the games in the past, you know. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of power in general in just owning stuff. You know, I mean, even if it's stuff that, you know you're not entirely responsible for you know there's a lot of factors into it but just like sort of shouldering stuff yourself and being like all right like the, i own my piece of this and yeah moving forward and and like the being honest thing i always think that's funny too when we 
don't want to upset other people or are worried about responding or those sorts of things. And we forget sometimes that like those people are still people. Mm -hmm. And most people enjoy being around people who are honest and who take responsibility for things. And if they don't, to hell with them. Yeah, yeah, you don't really want to like, be around those like, people. That's, that was like it's it's brutal, but like one of the things one of the things I really had to embrace too is just like if I can tell someone like I am like I'm in a really bad place right now and can't handle this, and if, if they don't want to hear it, then great, that's a person I don't need in my life. Like that's not someone yeah. who's gonna help me because even because then all they want is me at my best to do something for them. They don't want to be you know that was one of the hardest things about this last you know year and a half going through the stuff is learning who my real friends were and learning who weren't it I, I lost a lot of friends dealing with this stuff you know people who i thought were close friends of mine comics i knew and i'd you know you know they'd be like hey you know hey man how you been and i'd be like oh well you know i'm dealing with this i remember telling a friend you know someone who i really valued as a friend for years and i remember telling them just you know it was outside of an open mic and they were like and i wasn't going up because i didn't feel comfortable being on stage but i was just trying to be around people um, and they asked me how I was doing, and I just said, I'm like, yeah, I've had this really bad breakdown, probably the worst one. I'm going to be leaving town for a little bit. And he just kind of like slugged me in the shoulder. He's like, ah, oh, man, this dude's always sad. And like, it was just kind of, <laughs> it was just oh, kind of, yeah, it was just kind of a bit to him. And I remember just kind of looking at him being like, oh, wow, like, I thought you were like, like one of my people, but like, this. And then like, and I remember then, like, he, you know, he messaged me a while back about, you know, getting time at that open mic. And I just responded, I'm like, oh, I, I don't host there anymore. And then I never heard from him again. And I'm like, oh, like, I learned, like, oh, some people, like, oh, if I, if I can't just actively help your career, if I'm not just a positive force for you, you don't have time for me. Well, that's not how friendship works. Yeah. True friendship, like, you got to be there for people. And I, you know, the, the friends who have been there for me, you know, through all this stuff, like I, I want to be there for them. You know, I don't, I don't let them get away with not telling me what's going on when they're like, I'm just feeling really terrible. I'm like, no, please, please tell me I'm here. Yeah. You've already had to burden my stuff. I, I want to, you know, hear your stuff, which has made the friendships I have way more open and, and wonderful and, you know, and, and way closer than, you know, than I was with people I've known for, you know, a decade, you know, I'm closer with them now because, you know, we got to have that dialogue, you know, so it's, it's, I'm not saying if you're, if you're totally honest about the stuff, it's, it's going to be all great. Cause yeah, I've, I, I lost quite a few friends this last year needing to deal with it, but I don't know. I've, I also, I've gained some and, and the ones I've had, the friendships I've had are stronger than they were. So it's, you know, I also, I don't want to make it sound like it's just all sunshine and rainbows, <laughs> but you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> well, that's, such an interesting thing in life in general i mean do you think not that it would be your aiming point or that you would want to get to like the darkest place again but do you think in some ways it was a good thing to hit a rock bottom and then yeah have to build back up from there yeah yeah it absolutely was i mean yeah because i'm at a point now too like i you know i was telling you the other day i can't i can't even put myself in the headspace i was in it was so far away from my, just, I think who I am inherently, but I lived there for so long, but I, and it does allow me to kind of, cause now I can look back and kind of just be like, wow, I, I can overcome stuff. Cause I only ever saw myself as a failure, someone who couldn't get through things. And now now I don't, I, I'm going into all my new situations knowing like, you know what? I, I went through that. Yeah. You know, whatever. Like now, now, you know, now driving in the middle of nowhere and doing a crappy comedy show for little money, <laughs> which used to just, you know, used to make me angry. I'd be like, what am I doing with my life? Like, now nah, I got to do that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I get to come out here and do this. Like I've, you know, I've already flirted with killing myself. This is fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like as, as, you know, as, as glib as maybe that sounds like, <laughs> like, <laughs> I know it's maybe a messed up thing to say, but it is like, it is like, you know, at least now every situation I have, like, at least this isn't my brain attacking me again, you know, I don't know. And I don't know. And I've, I've had, you know, just been able to embrace the, like, you know what? I, I get to go do comedy for money, you know? Yeah. 
it's not my full time job, but it's a part time job. I make more doing it than a lot do, and you know, and I so now I'm trying to just look at the you know the bent you know I, I that's a good thing that I get to do that you know that just kind of happens you know and um and yeah I, like I know I have a, like I have a long way to go still a lot of stuff I'm still figuring out about myself and a lot of things I still want to do with my life but I I am ending this year feeling victorious like I do really feel like you know and half of the year was the worst year of my life and then yeah. the second half of the year has maybe been the best year of my life, which is so weird, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's, but that's, yeah, that's part of the journey. I I needed the first half to have the second half, you know? And I don't know. It's, I mean, yeah. So I, 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 do, I don't think, I just feel, I feel lighter. I feel less burdened. And I don't think I would have that without the true, like, just falling apart you know you you know i just had to i had to actually build myself up from the ground i had to completely fall apart you know i've i've always had to do things the hard way <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. so even with just feeling happy about life i i had to go down to the deepest darkest places that i didn't i didn't know existed you mm. know I'd, I'd been depressed before I'd, I'd had my bouts when i was in college and when i was younger but i i didn't truly know how bad it could be you know the the breakdown i i had before you know the last um podcast we did i i wasn't able to move for four hours i was i was hunched over like bent over unable to move i was sitting in the dark you know and actually being just i was actually thinking like what is happening to me? Like I'd, I'd had like meltdowns before, but I always knew I was just sad and there was stuff in my mind. But I remember that one, like sitting there being like, what is this? What is happening to me right now? Which was such a bizarre feeling to truly feel like I was not in control of me was really scary and terrifying. But it also then did, I now kind of appreciate the things I can control. And I do feel more in control of my own mind and how I feel. And so even though I know I may fall again, right now I'm not. Right now I've got myself moving forward and I'm doing stuff I want to do and I'm feeling just good about life again. That's good right now. I'm not saying it'll stick around forever. Right now I got it and I'm appreciating it. And that's like, that's been enough. You know, like when I talk to my therapist too about stand up, so you know, we've been talking about that stuff. And he's like, How do you feel about it? He's like, You know, are you writing more? And I'm like, My writing's still not where I want it to be. I wish I was writing more than I was, but I feel alive on stage again. That's enough right now. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, as maybe it's just, yeah, settling for less, but in, in a positive way of just like, right now, it feels good to feel good. I'm. Um, I'm taking that right now. Yeah. I don't have everything that I want. I haven't accomplished everything I want. I haven't had all the experiences I want. Those will come. Right now, I'm okay. That's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) That kind of feels like a wrapping up point again. Yeah, you think so. (laughs) You've been nailing the like kind of ending on on an inspirational arc. Um, Which... Uh, again, man, I just appreciate you being on here and talking about this stuff. It I made mean, just a wonderful experience for me the first time, not only talking to you, but people's reactions to yeah. it. And um, talking about the being on stage, I haven't seen you perform live in a while. It's been a minute, yeah. And I'm going to a show. For You're seeing me at. A, a New Year's Eve show, and I'm just really, really excited just to see you on stage again and for the New Year's Eve to ring in 2019. Like, it's going to be pretty awesome. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, I was like, the whole family's going to be together at New Year's. And when's the last time that happened? Been a long time. <laughs> yeah, like, been a long. Probably before any of us moved out, probably. Uh, I would have probably to be, even before I, that. I, like, I never really came home first much. You yeah. know what I mean? So I yeah, I imagine. Long time. Yeah, probably, a long time. Two thousand and three. Ringing probably ringing in two thousand and three. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, well, anyway, appreciate it. Love you, man. I love you too. And uh I guess that wraps up episode five. Yeah, man. <laughs>